Hi folks, we're ready to start with the last module, Module 5. And Module 5 is going to involve you putting everything together that you've learned in the previous four modules. Uh, you will cover all of the ISTE.NET standards for teachers, and um, you will be planning so that your students will be covering the ISTE.NET standards for students. So, it's one great big task with lots of little steps. The first thing you're going to need to do is to create a new web page attached to your site and label that web page putting it all together. The second thing you're going to need to do is to choose one of these two SOLs that I have provided. If you have another SOL that you would like to use that's either science or social studies, um, I can um, agree to that. Please just let me know that you've chosen a different one. Um, but I, it, and, Thinking about time, I thought it would be easier if I chose two for you. One is a Social Studies third grade SOL, looking at the um, important people, uh, Rosa Parks, Thurgood Marshall, and Martin Luther King. The second one is another third grade, but from science this time, and um, students investigating and understanding simple machines. So you will, after choosing your um, SOL, uh, you will have time in a later step to work on doing some research about that particular SOL. But if you recall, one of the things in the set process as well as UDL is the first thing you need to think about once you have your goal in mind, and in our case, our SOL in mind, is to learn about your class. And so at the bottom of um, this page, you will need to download our, di our diverse class. This gives you pictures and um, little uh, snippets about each one of the students. Uh, it mentions their strengths. It mentions things that they struggle with. Uh, for some of them, it uh, mentions their um, situations at home and we all know that that plays into learning about our students so you're going to read about your students that are going to be in your class note their strengths and areas of need um, because the next step step four is you creating a set chart and you're going to complete the set chart for each of your students so you can use the set chart that was created in module four you can copy and paste that because you're going to put this on your web page. I want to be able to see um, each one of these steps as you go through them. Uh, and you will, for each, I believe there's seven children in the classroom. Um, so for each child, you're going to complete the components of the set process. So the first we know is students. So you're going to tell me what you know about the student based on um, the information that you've been given. If you want to make up something else about your student and put it in there, feel free to. Um, the next step in that set process is think about the environment. And your environment, I will just tell you, is going to be in an inclusive classroom because all of these students are in the same classroom. So it's in an inclusive classroom. I'll tell you that in this classroom, your students do have access to computers. They do have access to um, iPads. Uh, there's a class set of iPads to use. There is a, um, a smart board and a projector. Um, and those are pretty common in most of our school settings, at least having three to four standalone computers per room as well as having access to the mobile technologies like iPads or iPods and having smart boards and um, the projectors to go with them. In the task piece, the task is going to be one of the SOLs that you chose, whatever the SOL is. Now, this is just going to be one lesson that you're writing, so narrow it down to, if you're choosing the social studies, Choose one of those individuals to learn about. Um, if you're choosing the science one, 
choose either learning the names of all six simple machines or a focus on just one of the uh, six simple machines or a focus on compound machines. So don't try to do them all in this one lesson. Uh, narrow that focus down. And then um, for the tools, we're going to leave that blank for now because you need to go out and do some research. So this is where you're going to use your, um, your search skills, your newfound search skills that you've come across. Um, so you're going to think about the three principles of universal design as you're doing this. Thinking about the first principle being making sure students are engaged and what engagement means. All right, that means they're interested, you have connected with them, something personal to their lives, and that you have um, activated some background knowledge. For some students, it's also that being safe in a classroom, uh, that you have a community within the classroom. Some students may prefer to work in groups. Some students may prefer to work alone. Some students may uh, need preferential seating uh, during certain parts of a task. So all that has to do with the um, multiple means of engagement. The next area is that multiple means of expression. These are all the ways that you can present the content to the student. And you're going to have to use your search skills to go out and find information about these things. How are you going to share the information with the students? Thinking about the students that are in your class, and this is a very diverse class that, that you're working with. And finally, the last column is for your principles of assessment. It's assessment and student interaction. So it may not necessarily be a formal assessment for a grade, but it may be you checking just to make sure children understand. Uh, so an informal assessment, it could be how students are going to interact with the content. So perhaps they're creating a chart or a graph or they're uh, on a scavenger hunt, uh, they're role playing. How are they interacting with what you have taught? So that will be your UDL chart. Remember this is brainstorming. List everything you can think of because when you start to actually write the lesson plan. So be sure that you use this time when you're thinking of how you're going to represent the content. How can students interact with the content? What can they do? Um, that you are brainstorming. Just you know, let your brain go. Get out and search and look and see what you can find out there uh, to support your teaching. Um, then you're going to um, go back to your set table and think about now that you sort of know what you're going to be, what is out there for you. Uh, what kind of tools do you think your students are going to need to be able to participate and be included um, in your lesson? Are there going to be specific things that you will need to think of and do? For some students, there might not be anything. There may, they may be able to uh, grasp the content just based on you uh, presenting information in various ways, based on you grouping. So the only people that need special tools are perhaps the ones that have um, more significant or more special needs. From there, you will be downloading uh, the lesson plan form that is below. And I have put a template, which is the blank form for you to fill out. And I have put an example of what that will look like. Those of you that have worked with me before know that lesson plans have to be scripted. And I want to see, be able to hear you talking to me or hear you talking to your class um, within your lesson plan. And this sample plan will give you a feel for that. And it's a social studies plan. It will also show you how to complete the UDL chart that's actually embedded in the lesson plan. 
uh, your UDL chart uh, that you've created up in step number six, remember was brainstorming. When you go to write your lesson plan, you have picked from your little menu that you created from your brainstorm um, and you, you will be using those methods and strategies to teach your content. So you're going to complete your plan, making sure you have each one of those sections completed. Uh, I stress the importance of your scripting this and be sure that you save your plan and you're going to post it to the add files at the bottom of your page. Once you've completed your plan, um, the next step is to create a newsletter for parents that lets them know about this SOL that you're going to be teaching. And this is just a one page, just the front of a newsletter. Uh, there is a checklist that is included that will help you and guide you in creating your lesson plan. I was going to give you some templates for you to use and then I thought, no, you need to practice your search skills. So I want you to look for, search for newsletter templates on Word and or Google Docs. You can find them for both of those, um, both of those programs. Uh, and I would like for you to post your completed newsletter down in the add files. And when you see the checklist, that gives you uh, some more directions about the newsletter. The next thing I would like for you to do is to create an activity to go with your SOL that uses the QR codes. Um, and this should, can go along with a book perhaps that you're going to read in your lesson. It might go along with teaching important vocabulary or anything. Just use your imagination. Um, I did provide you with several good links to give you that you can go to and look for how you might use these QR codes. Uh, for that, you're going to either need to include the QR codes on your web page or put them within a document and save that at the bottom of the page. And the very last thing that's going to be on this page is a video of you. And this video um, probably be 10 minutes at the most. Uh, I need you to tell me um, about your lesson. Tell me the U.S. the the SOL that you chose to teach. And then I want you to summarize how you're going to do that. I would like you to really focus in on your UDL chart and how you went about choosing the items that you did for that chart and why you chose the things that you did for that chart. And I would also like for you to tell me how your lesson fits in with the ISTE net standards for students and to the 21st century learning skills. Um, you can record your um, step 12 on your cell phone and then just upload to YouTube and YouTube can be embedded right onto your web page under insert or you can use a, a program like Screencast-O-Matic which is what I've been using for all of my videos. Uh, whatever is the easiest and works for you, okay? And you're going to make sure that that is inserted onto your web page. So when I pull up your web page, I'm going to see your video and can listen to that right there. A lot of steps, but again, it's review. It's getting you to practice and use the things that we have talked about or you, and you have learned about through the past four weeks. Any questions, you can let me know. Remember, contact me by email or text uh, or meet me on the Google Hangouts on Tuesday evenings.